Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is a note to both St. Luke's. St. Luke in Park Ridge, St. Luke's in Park Ridge, and St. Luke on Belmont in Chicago. There are several things that both of you have in common that, that have made my life and ministry with you a joy. The first is excellence. Excellence in music, excellence in liturgy, excellence in upkeep of the facilities, excellence in everything about these two congregations. It has been a joy to be fed every Sunday morning that I'm with you. Another thing that both you saints have in common is children and families. St. Luke on Belmont has a long history of St. Luke Academy. In fact, the school was started before the church way back when. And children from the academy just participated last Sunday in uh, the worship, as they do from time to time. And St. Luke's in Park Ridge has, as a part of its strategic plan, um, excellence um, in ministry to, with, and for uh, children and families. And uh, we're starting to have children's lessons again. Um, and uh, uh, our Sunday school now has often our music director and me and Beth Ann and others with the children for opening worship with some adults because it's an intergenerational thing. What strikes me is how much these children gain uh, that's not verbal, that's in the feeling and the senses, uh, um, a sense of holiness and joy at being in the presence of God. Um, that That is uh, very, very vivid for young people. Um, this coming Sunday, Pastor Elizabeth Palmer, the book review editor of Christian Century, uh, will be at St. Luke's in Park Ridge to read a children's story to the children in Sunday school. And uh, we'll then uh, share an adult forum in which we talk about what are some of the books that really enchant children, help strengthen their faith in the love of Jesus. I still remember um, my mom taking us five kids to church, sitting in the fifth pew on the right. Uh, our father had the easy job. He was the uh, organist up in the choir loft. And my mother would try and keep us all still and attentive and would bribe us with Fruit Loops and, and uh, candy uh, to, to uh, keep us from um, completely disrupting the service. And when things got really bad, the lady behind us, uh, Mrs. Ladwig, I found out was her name, we called her the gum lady, would uh, give us some chiclets and um, that would calm us down. And then my, our mother would abandon us. Children didn't go up to the altar in those days and she would go up to the altar for Holy Communion. And we paid attention. And when my mother came back, she was different. She looked different. She smelled different. I learned more about the holy and about reverence by watching and worshiping with my elders than I ever learned in books or verbal words. It's so important to be with the children. I want to share with you a beautiful poem that I came upon this past week by Stephen Dunn, a poet who died in 2021. It's called At the Smithville Methodist Church, and it tells the story of, uh, of someone who had sort of lost touch with the sense of Jesus and, and the holy, and 
sent his daughter to, uh, I think, a vacation Bible school to get some arts and crafts. And here's the poem he wrote at the Smithville Methodist Church. It was supposed to be arts and crafts for a week, but when she came home with the Jesus Saves button, we knew what art was up, what ancient craft. She liked her little friends. She liked the songs they sang when they weren't twisting and folding paper into dolls. What could be so bad? Jesus had been a good man, and putting faith in good men was what we had to do to stay this side of cynicism, that other sadness. Okay, we said, one week. But when she came home singing, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so, it was time to talk. Could we say, Jesus doesn't love you? Could I tell her the Bible is a great book certain people use to make you feel bad? We sent her back without a word. It had been so long since we believed, so long since we needed Jesus as our nemesis and friend, that we thought he was sufficiently dead. That our children would think of him like Lincoln or Thomas Jefferson. Soon it became clear to us, you can't teach disbelief to a child. Only wonderful stories. And we hadn't a story nearly as good. On parents' night, there were the arts and crafts all spread out like appetizers. Then we took our seats in the church, and the children sang a song about the ark and hallelujah, and one in which they had to jump up and down for Jesus. I can't ever remember feeling so uncertain about what's comic, what's serious. Evolution is magical, but devoid of heroes. You can't say to your child, evolution loves you. The story stinks of extinction and nothing. Exciting happens for centuries. I didn't have a wonderful story for my child and she was beaming. All the way home in the car, she sang the songs, occasionally standing up for Jesus. There was nothing to do but drive Write it out, sing along in silence. St. Luke's, St. Luke, God bless you because you are a blessing to the children and the child in each of us.